welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Leslie Ann Samuel, president of UJA, the Union of Jamaican Alumni Associations. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Leslie Ann Samuel. Welcome back to the program. Thank you so much for having me, Lydia. I'm delighted to be here. It is wonderful to have you. We've had you a couple of times, and mm -hmm. it's always great, you know, every year... The associations are growing. Yes, they Yuja are. Yuja is getting bigger and better. And it, this is particularly special to have you this time because it's the end of your term. This is your last term that you will this be serving. This is my last term. I have served three terms. And I was asked to actually stay on for one more because we were right in the middle of COVID. And they said, listen, please, uh, this is not a good time for us to change. So I stayed. Absolutely. And, and now that you did mention COVID, kind of let's talk about just how COVID has been, um, we know like the obvious, of course, mm -hmm. but from the association standpoint and everything mm -hmm. that you were doing, you know, I think everybody has such high hopes for 2020. It was going to be a blowout year. Oh, it would gosh, have been, yes. You guys had things planned mm -hmm. and it would have been great. And then the world changed, and you know, and changed. you have to pivot. So how were you guys really impacted? We were impacted like everyone else. Um, we simply had to figure out what to do next. Interestingly enough, uh, last 2020 was Yuja's 30th anniversary year. So okay. that got put on hold, yes. But you know, like everybody else, we learned to Zoom. Um, we actually used it to not only have meetings, but just to kind of get together, yeah. to keep in touch. And we encouraged our members um, to use our account, you know, so they didn't have that expense and just stay connected because we needed to know what was going on. We needed to stay in touch since we, we didn't have the physical. We needed at least that. So, you know, we, had, we adjusted, but it also kind of gave us some new opportunities mm -hmm. to help in Jamaica um, because, you know, what ended up happening, certainly for education, is that everybody needed laptops and tablets. Oh, yes. Everybody needed masks. Everybody needed food. Ah, a lot of people didn't think about that when, when that whole thing started. So we ended up doing care packages mm -hmm. for our students. So, uh, you know, we just kind of flexed. We did what we had to do uh, to continue to support and uh, to keep in touch. I think it was probably the most important thing. That's amazing. And yeah. I'm so proud to hear that, that you were able to still keep the movement going. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. stay connected on that. It, the associations didn't suffer because of that. You know, you shift shift gears, you make yeah. things work, and, and that's the best that you could do. Yeah. Um, for the new viewers that we may have, why don't we take a step back and sure. just kind of talk about what is Yuja, yeah. how it got started for those who don't know. Sure. So Yuja, as I mentioned, is 31 years old. We are an umbrella organization, so our members are organizations themselves. So there are alumni uh, organizations for primary or sec uh, what you call here elementary, elementary, uh, secondary or high, mm -hmm. and tertiary uh, universities and stuff, alumni associations of schools in Jamaica. So uh, we have very, very strong commitment to our schools uh, and to our education system. And so that's, we got started. Um, interestingly enough, because our Consul General asked us to. He okay. said, you guys need to get organized. I am tired of coming to events on the same day. <laughs> and so we said, okay. But then uh, what ended up happening is that we became the fist of the fingers, is how I like to talk about it. The alumni associations being the fingers, and together we can have better impact by being a fist coming together and doing together the kinds of things that the individual alumni associations could not 
Because it'll be too small, and it would be small. too exactly. small and too many. Whereas and too many, exactly. You could just all come get grouped up together, and it makes perfect, perfect sense. sense. Exactly. So, one of our primary focus areas has been supporting what we call basic schools. So these are the schools for the children that are three to six. So before they really, really start school, school, we have a lot of those in Jamaica. Believe it or not, over two thousand. Really? Yes. Well, because they're very small. You know, they're typically started by um, ex-teachers, retired teachers, or grandparents yeah. who just kind of take in the neighborhood children. And before you know it, there's a school. There's a school. Yeah. <laughs> so we try to support them because they don't have alumni associations. They don't have anybody supporting them. And they're, they, you know, the first, they say the first thousand uh, days of a child's life are the most important. So we catch them just on the edge of that because our feeling is that if, if you start with the very, very young, then, you know, it be kind of become it, it just kind of trickles through. It does. It becomes second nature. Exactly. So we have been actually trying to grow um, our primary school alumni associations, our elementary school, because we want to give them more attention, uh, be same logic. If they do well, then high school becomes a no-brainer. You know, it becomes really easy. Mm -hmm. So we've been focusing a whole lot more on our primary school. So in a nutshell, that's what UJ is all about, doing together what in the individual associations can't do. And I love that. And that's so amazing to see that, that you really have that platform available exactly. because Again, trying to do it alone, strength is the numbers. They Absolutely. see the benefit of doing that. Exactly. What about, and I'm sure there's millions, because the Jamaican diaspora here is, is huge, but I'm sure there's, I have friends who did primary school in Jamaica, but been in the mm -hmm. States, you know, from, you know, definitely from high school beyond. Right. Myself included. Right, there's a lot of people like, oh, at least, or even if they came here by fifth grade, seventh grade, but mm -hmm. part of that formal years have been in Jamaica. Jamaica. Correct. So do you target those people here who may want to know of what info is happening with their old schools and Absolutely. all that stuff? Absolutely. You know, it's so funny. I got a call just the other day, uh, somebody asking me, does my school have uh, an alumni association? I said, well, if they don't, we can help you start one. I am sure there are others here that you went to school with perhaps and uh you know and if that's something you're interested in doing we can certainly help you do that but yeah you know we are very well known across the diaspora because we've been here so long and we've really kind of hung in there um and so um our consul general our ambassador they all know of us know of our work and so they encourage um, our existence and they encourage our work and they encourage others to support us as well so it's been good it's no been that's good. great yeah. um, and definitely when we're gonna take a break shortly but when we come back I, I want to make sure we talk about you know the funding and all those big things oh because <laughs> it's hot topics yes yeah, you okay. know that it's important and I think a lot of people kind of take it for granted you know yeah. that sometimes these things don't just run no, they like don't. That. No, they you don't. You know, especially the title of being the president. Yeah, yeah. We are all volunteers, you know. You know exactly. That's something that not everybody realizes. So, so that's important. Tough. But we'll take a break and we'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Leslie Ann, let's talk about the finances that we were saying, you know. What money. finances? The finances, <laughs> the non-existent ones. Because right. you get a non-existent paycheck. It's, it's truly a, a labor of love. Absolutely. I have an 11-member board. We're all volunteers. All of the associations or member associations, they are all volunteers. So, uh, you know, it is indeed a labor of love. So... Um, we work hard though, you know, and um, financing. So, 
You know, that another area that really impacted us uh, through the COVID uh, coronavirus pandemic, because we, the organizations would have events, um, dinner dances in particular, yep. reunions, you know, is what they ended up becoming. Uh, they would give scholarships and, and their members would show up, you know, to, sh to support because they all want to give back. So we used to have a lot of those, uh, you know, uh, uh, every yeah, month. Galas and yes. big things, yes, oh, I remember. yes, we had lots of them. That all ended. So then what did our associations do? They pivoted and they moved to Zoom to have virtual events. We yes. did too, you know. And so interestingly enough, many of our associations did better during the pandemic um, because folks understood um, one, that we were in a very special time, and two, it was easy to give. They could do it from their homes. Click away. From wherever they were, exactly. And so many of the organizations actually did very well. That's Raising great. funds, just asking folks to give whatever you can. Whatever. You can, exactly. And they did. So, you know, uh, that's generally how we raise our money. We simply ask folks to give. <laughs> I love that, you know, and and it's really gets used to just keep the organization going. Oh, uh, well, you know, we have uh, an operational budget and I will tell you that about 15 percent of our budget is operations, true operations. The rest of it we give away. We give back. You know, we try really hard to manage that very closely mm -hmm. um, and and find ways to help have others help us with those kind of operational expenses, if you will, so that we can do what we really need to do um, in Jamaica. So, you know, and, and I have to say that one of the things that Yuja does do is because we are here in the diaspora, we are a part of the Caribbean community. Absolutely. So, you know, when we had the um, hurricane in Haiti, we give. When we had the um, uh, volcano the eruption yes. in St. Vincent, we gave. You know, we, we, we collect and we match and, and we do what we can because we are part of this community as well. Absolutely. And they're supporting us as well you know it's very interesting to to work with folks from uh, the other caribbean islands because they don't seem to have that influx that strength in the alumni their alumni associations as we do in jamaica which is fascinating to me actually you know but that actually starts from you're in jamaica it's that 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 love and commitment to uh, your school, you know, that, that, that starts there. It, it almost yeah. reminds me of, I have friends who go to Champs every oh, year. Absolutely. And I'm like, you guys are all American. That's You're all from here. <laughs> and they make it a point. point. Yes. You're they are going to Champs. And I'm like, and then Champs? And if they don't <laughs> go to Champs, then they go to Philadelphia. Yes. Uh, right after, you know, because Champs feeds Philly. If, uh, I don't know if you, the pen relays. Yeah. Right. And so many of our organizations do a lot of fundraising for that so that they can bring their teams. I learned up. about that yeah. and um, put on just from, you know, having very close to making friends. friends. And I was like, What's have you ever been I, to, to pen relays? No, not been? to pen relays. Oh, okay. I've been to Jamaica many times. Okay. But um, not to champs. If you go to champs, you, c you will uh, definitely see Jamaica's colors. I'll tell you yeah. that. <laughs> Yes, it's, for it's sure. known for sure. Yes. Um, so why don't we talk about some of the highlights for you as president, you know, over your mm. now fourth term. Yeah. <laughs> what have been some of the memorable moments? Um, I know you did mention the galas and stuff like yeah. that, but what are some of the top things that as you exit out and make this your final term that are really going to be near and dear to you? Sure. As I mentioned earlier about our focus on the primary schools, that has been a big area for me. Um, so when we started, we had maybe three organizations that supported primary schools. We support, I think, close to 12 now. So we're really growing that area. And in doing so, we are trying to expand some of the programs that we have had for the high schools to the primary school level. So for example, one of the programs that I'm very, very um, 
proud of is robotics. We have been doing, um, helping our students in Jamaica compete in robotics competitions at the high school level um, to the point where they now have a competition in Jamaica for high schools in Jamaica and for the past three years before COVID um, we had a we would take a team internationally to a, an international competition so we were able to take some students to Dubai we were able to take some students to Mexico City to Washington DC fabulous so Jamaica was present um, to a global basically countries coming together to compete fabulous so we're trying to take that to the primary school levels as well similarly we have a leadership program for students at the high school level so we're trying to bring that to the primary school level. so all of those things uh, really represent the things that I am very very proud that Yuja has moved into that space in a big way to encourage that you know robotics is all about IT it's yeah. about it's leading edge. It's the it way of the future, you know? And it embraces so many disciplines as well as teamwork, cooperation, all those so very important soft skills that are needed by our students. So um, by taking that now to the uh, primary school or, or elementary school level, you know, we start to develop these young minds from really early. And I'm, I am confident, I don't know that I'll see it uh, before uh, I expire, but I'm sure that over time we will start to see that impact oh, absolutely. At, the, at the secondary school level, and that's the goal. Because right now, you know, you don't think of the Caribbean, not even just Jamaican, when you think of robotics. Yes. The Caribbean no. doesn't really come top of mind. You know, it's interesting. At the, at the college level, Jamaica actually has been performing extremely well. So they're not in Utah, but that's okay. The point, though, is that you know they kind of set the set the pace, and so we're kind of starting to grow it just a little bit earlier. So that's cultivate one that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm fairly, really, very, very proud of that. Um, I I am so very hopeful that uh, the presidents that come behind me will you know continue to expand that. Um, because I think the more that we do for our elementary school levels, I think will ultimately benefit everyone, including the country, which is a lot of mine. Well, hold that thought. We'll take mm -hmm. a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. So, Leslie Ann, you know, 2021, we're, we're almost over when you think yes. about it. It's going to be are. almost over. 2022, we feel so hopeful. I think that's almost, we're back to where 2020, that ex same excitement because people yes. are like, vaccines are here. You're feeling hopeful. Absolutely. What can we look forward to? A, a little sneak peek of what Yuja has coming up In for 2020. In store? Yes. Well, the first thing that we're actually doing this year is finally celebrating our anniversary. We only do it every five years. And we do it with a fairly elaborate event. Um, but we also, th the biggest part of that event is that we give awards. Um, for our 25th, we gave 25 awards. It was hard. Uh, it's, it has been called the Oscars of Philanthropy. I'll help you with that one. Oh, there nice. you go. Nice, right? I thought, oh, I wish I had come up with that. But So we're doing that celebration since we couldn't do it last year for our 30th. We're celebrating our 31st in December. Um, we figured let, let's aim for the end of the year with the hope that by then, you know, uh, it'll be safe. So we're looking forward to that. We've just started planning that. Um, December 19th, we will have that uh, gala. We're doing it as a luncheon this year uh, to try that, you know, something a little different. Um, I think we are actually looking forward to 
um, some actually implementing or continuing to implement, let me say it that way, some of the programs that we actually started during the COVID-19 um, coronavirus pandemic. For example, you know, we believe that um, we learned some things with, with, the, with, with the pandemic. And one of them was the fact that education just in the classroom is just not the way mm -hmm. anymore. Okay, it's, not. it's just not the way. So we have to do a little bit of in classroom and a little bit of online and figure out how to maximize it has to that. be a hybrid. Exactly. And so what that means for us is that our commitment to providing devices laptops and, and, and tablets will have to continue. So we're trying to figure out how to actually step up that program, you know, so I'm sure that something, um, we, we provided 13 million Jamaican dollars worth of, of devices already. Actually, it's probably a little bit more than that, but that's a good number. And, uh, and how much is that in U.S. dollars? Um, it's uh, um, about f almost 50,000. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, again, working together to to buy the devices, getting a good deal, and then, you know, coming together to ship them together, you know? So And hoping you know, that once they land, they actually uh, get to the people. Uh, we have actually a very good process with our good. government for that. So that part is actually pretty straightforward. Good. Yeah, we worked that out Let's long ago. hear horror ago. stories yes, about... No. It's been in customs forever. No, not for our schools. Not for our schools. Uh, we have a really good process. So if others want to hear about that, I'll be happy to tell you. NET, National Education Trust, is uh, the organization that was set up in Jamaica to actually make that work. And we love it, personally. You know, because it works. It works. Yes, it works. And saves us money. In, which is the bottom line. So we will certainly continue some of the programs that we have done for many years. You know, we have a basic school uh, that we built um, in 2003, so we'll continue to support that. We support a school called uh, Operation Restoration Christian School, which is um, what we call um, uh, community unification through education. So it's a very depressed community that has a school that's actually for teenagers who just kind of never made it to high school. And so we, th that school does something really unique. And so we've been trying to support them. So our high school graduate awards program, which is coming up in a, in a couple weeks, uh, which we do for students here, will certainly continue. So, you know, we'll continue to do some things and we'll con try to do some new things new as things well. New things as well. Absolutely, I absolutely. love it. How can everybody at home get in contact with the organization um, to get more information on the website, Sign social all media, that all that good stuff? So we have a really fun, that's one of the other things we did during COVID is we rebuilt our website. So www.ujusa.org is the best way to get in contact with us, at plus learn about who we are and what we do, and, and you can see all the organizations that are, are part of us. And if you don't see yours, then contact us anyway and we can help you. Um, we are absolutely on Facebook and we also have a YouTube channel. So on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, honey, okay. We have a YouTube channel. Yes, indeed. I love that. Yes, indeed. And and we're also on LinkedIn. So those, you know, we are, we're we're starting slowly because you know the good advice that we got was uh, limit your exposure, do it well in one area, and then expand. So that's exactly what we're doing. So we have a very strong presence on Facebook, ujusa.org, mm -hmm. to find us. And uh, if you're into LinkedIn and making those professional connections, we're there too. So that's how to reach us. That okay. is great. So everybody at home, if you really want to get more information, do check them out. It's going to be amazing. And then, like you said, if you click on and you don't see your school. Absolutely. We have actually helped several organizations get started. You know, we work with them so that they can become nonprofits in the state of New York and file for their 501c3 uh, a nonprofit status with the government, with the IRS, and, you know, fully function. So, and then we guide them, you know, because there are some rules to follow yes. that uh, are important. Um, and so, you know, that's, where, that's why we're there. We're there to help and support um, so that, you know, we can all do what we can for our island home. That we all love How so much. How do you balance, you know, being your professional life, your family duties, 
Yuja. How do you find that balance to do? Uh, time management, really. Um, you know, I have, I'm, I'm a, a compulsive list writer, just so you know. <laughs> thank goodness and you know that's how I keep track and um, that's actually one of the first skills that I had to master in this job um, because uh, the demands just keep coming mm -hmm. and then I will tell you honestly I take a week off every year I go home to Jamaica and I relax I unplug I and I learned that from my aunt who was a compulsive giver backer, as I like to call her. But every year she just unplugged. And, you know, you, it helps you to revive and, and re, re restore, you know, yourself. And uh, so I live by that. I look forward to that every August. I go to Negril. Didn't go last year. It's been yes. tough. Um, but I look forward to just kind of chillaxing as I like to yeah. say yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, getting it together and start again yes. so you just power down from Yuja but everything I power down from right, everything, everything. I, I don't take any devices with me <gasps> other than my phone I only take my phone yeah. I don't take any computer yes commend to you well, Leslie Ann thank you so much and thank it you. was amazing to have you back here during your special this is a very special term yes. it's done but we are glad to have it. you one last time thank you so very much for having me I so very much appreciate what you do and for having me you're very mm -hmm. welcome and as always if you have any questions or comments you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com I'm your host Lydia Patel thank you so much for joining us and we'll be back again next week same time same place you're watching Beyond Focus TV Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you.